about my typing. That's why you did it, because you're damn typing. Well, I was upset. I, I had a bad day. You had a bad day. I lost my job. I didn't get paid. I got thrown out of my room. I got no place to go. I'm flat broke. It's raining. I'm stuck in a crummy room without pervert. Right. At least you got your help. Oh, very funny, boy. You're one hell of... my work. It's, it's, it's part of my studies, you might yeah, say. Yeah, what are you studying to be, a gynecologist? I happen to be a writer. I observe people. That is what a writer does. Ha! What a writer does is write. Looking through windows what a peeping Tom does. Eventually, this ill-matched pair develops a surprisingly believable and very sexy relationship, with Streisand in peak form playing one of her specialties, a nutty nonconformist who also just happens to be an irresistible charmer. You think I'm Freddy? Not really. I just make you think I am. How do you do that? It's a trick. It's it's um it's hard to explain. I don't understand. Well, uh, it's it's kind of like acting, you know. I mean, you, you gotta act pretty. I should watch this. No, I pretty right. Watch this. Oh, that's amazing. What's Up, Doc? was a slapstick extravaganza from director Peter Bogdanovich, a tribute to screwball comedies of the 30s with Ryan O'Neill as a stuffy professor who's dragged into adventure by the madcap Streisand. What are you doing? This is a one-way street. We're already going one way. Sandbox was a more serious comedy that tried to make a feminist statement. Streisand is good as a frustrated housewife, but the movie's heavy-handed as it mixes reality with her fantasies, as in this scene where she confronts her pushy mother. Margaret, you don't understand. I simply refuse to let you go on raising your children in that disgusting city, surrounded by underprivileged Spanish-speaking persons and colored people. Don't you ever shut up? I don't come around here and tell you how to live. But you come barging in on me anytime you feel like it. Can you imagine what would happen if we lived in the same state? You wouldn't let up till you turned my kids into narrow-minded, prejudiced, overweight, split-level schnooks. See? That's the way you are. It never occurs to you to think about what your children or your husband or your parents might like. No, you're selfish. That's what you are. I don't want to live near you. If this is what it's like to be a mother, I turn in my ovaries. It's too late now, dear. What do you mean by that? You already have two little investments in the future. And listen, everybody, hold on to your hat. No, 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 I've got no, news no, for no, you. No, no, no. Well, she's already got a little well, bundle. She's going to have a dream, just like me. Oh. 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 She's absolutely crazy. Don't listen to her. The main event also had some feminist overtones, with Streisand as a business tycoon who holds the contract for boxer Ryan O'Neill. After their first night, they go through a role rehearsal the morning after. What, are you asking me to get married? Yes! Why, are you pregnant? Oh, cut it out, Hillary. No jokes. Two people like each other, they should get married. Now, how do you feel about that? I don't know, kid. I mean, you're rushing me, you know? What's the matter? Aren't I good enough for you? Yeah, sure. Oh, you make me feel cheap. Cheap? Believe me, kid, you are not cheap. I, I, I like feel like a pretty face to you, like like a one night stand. No, kid, I respect you. Hey. No, I feel used, like you took advantage of me. Why? Just because I won't marry you the morning after? You don't even tell me how you feel, Michael. From in Spain, are you? Thousands of Spanish citizens are being bombed and machine gunned and murdered. Only one country is sending help. One country. The Soviet Union. 
Eventually, she falls in love with Redford, the campus jock, but their relationship would never be easy. In this scene, she persuades him to give their love affair at least a fair chance. I don't have the right style for you. Do I? Be my friend. Style. I'll change. No, don't change. You're your own girl. You have your own style. But then I won't have you. Why can't I have you? Why? Because you push too hard. Every damn minute. I mean, we don't... <laughs> There's no time ever to just relax and enjoy living. Everything's too serious to be so serious. If I push too hard, it's because I want things to be better. I want us to be better. I want you to be better. Sure, I make waves. I mean, you have to, and I'll keep making them until you're every wonderful thing you should be and will be. You'll never find anyone as good for you as I am, to believe in you as much as I do or love you as much. I know that. Well, then why? Do you think if I come back, it's going to be okay by magic? What's going to be changed? What's going to be different? We'll both be wrong. We'll both lose. Couldn't we both win? By 1976, Streisand was such a big star that she began producing her own movies. And she bought the idea to remake A Star Is Born, changing the characters from an actor on the way down and his actress wife on the way up to a couple of rock stars headed in the opposite direction. Chris Christopherson co-starred in this movie, which many called an overblown ego trip for her. But once again, Streisand was involved in a story about an unhappy love affair, as here her marriage is about to fall apart. wants an interview with you. Dirty son of a... Hey, get out. What do you mean, get out? What the hell did I, I do? I mean, get out. What the hell with you, man? Hey, listen. He couldn't make it anyway. Put it in the interview. Don't leave anything out. I said get out. I've had it with you. You can trash your life, but you're not gonna trash mine. Later. But even before A Star is Born, Streisand was intrigued by a short story by I.B. Singer about a 19th century Jewish girl in Poland who disguises herself as a man to study the Talmud. Streisand struggled through endless rewrites and rejections before directing herself in Yentl, one of the better movies of 1983. No wonder he likes it. Want someone who fusses and flatters, what who you? makes you feel that you're all that matters, whose only aim in life is to serve you and make you think she doesn't deserve you. No wonder. All right. He loves it happens. What all the time. could he do? <laughs> You know, Jeffrey, the court psychiatrists and her family want to see her committed to a mental hospital. But Streisand tries to persuade a public defender, advice. who's beautifully played by Richard Dreyfus, you know that she ought to be judged sane and allowed to stand trial. Mrs. Draper, there are two psychiatrists who already say that you're crazy. You gotta have at least one psychiatrist who says you're not crazy or you don't have a case. Sure I do. I'm my case. I get up there, I say my piece, I prove I'm competent. Look, I don't know if you believe this or not, but I'm a perfectly sane woman. And I don't bother anyone who doesn't bother me first. You get it? And I don't want any more quacks running around in my head talking about my toilet training. There's only one thing that scares me. A stupid client, and you terrified me. Have you ever testified in court? No. So you've never been cross-examined? No. You have no idea what it's like? No. How long have you been hooking? Three years. Three years and you've never been busted? Never. Now tell me I'm incompetent. As their relationship uh, develops, this fascinating movie I'm very wisely here, avoids the cliché that everyone's here, expecting. Here, right? A romance between the married lawyer and a sexy client. The issue between them here is respect, not love, as Streisand demands that she be treated with dignity despite her vulnerable and humiliating position. 
And I, I brought you some clothing for you to wear at the hearing. You bought me clothes? Tonight? Brought you. Brought you. Oh. From where? From your apartment. Who said you could go to my apartment? What did you take? Some clothing, uh, a dress, you know, some shoes, uh, some nice things. I want you to wear your own clothing at the hearing. Why didn't you ask me? Because there was no time. Come on. Claudia, I'm just trying to help you. What gives you the right to invade me? Invade you? I don't want you to look like a nut in court. When was the last time you went through your wife's dress? When is, when is the last time you scouted around in her panty drawer? It's no big deal. It is a big deal. You want to calm when down? When is the last time someone went through your damn things without permission? I'm sorry. I decide who sees my underwear. I'm sorry. 